SA Agalas 2, South Africa's flagship research ship, is docked at the Cape Town Harbour following World Oceans Day. The vessel is a hub of research on changing weather patterns. It regularly travels to the Antarctica and other parts of the world to conduct studies to support ocean conservation. Now, over the last four days, thousands of people visited the ship and met local scientists. Our reporter, Erin Bates, is also on board and joins us now. Erin, thanks for making time. Tell us more about this vessel. Sure, Clement. Well, it is currently docked at Cape Town Harbour, as you say. Sails much further afield, including to Marion Island and, of course, uh, the very shores of Antarctica. Robin Island is behind me here in uh, the ocean uh, view, and uh, we're going to get a better sense of what uh, the scientists have been sharing with uh, members of the public. We understand that there has been a public cry uh, for tours of the S.A. Agalas II. It's a flagship national research vessel, and, of course, uh, ocean Ocean, World Ocean Day, uh, putting the spotlight on oceans and ocean research. We're going to speak to one of the marine scientists who's been on board this vessel many times, Mtutuzeli Gulekana. Um, tell us more about the work you do on this ship. Hi, Erin. Uh, my name is Mtutuzeli Gulekana. I'm a marine scientist uh, specialized in physical oceanography, which is the physics of the ocean. Physics of the ocean basically talks about uh, your currents, how fast your currents are going in the ocean. It t talks about your tides in the ocean and how, how those affect your daily lives and, and, and telling people where they can be and where they cannot be. And physical oceanography is, is quite a, a unique field in, 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 our, in, 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 our, in our country. Uh, there's not many of, of physical oceanographers. And it's not only physical oceanography that we have. We also have ocean chemistry. We also have uh, a biology, which is ocean biology. And those are the guys that tell us how much food there is in the ocean. And the chemists will tell us about how much nutrients we have. Some of them will tell us about how much pH there is in the ocean. And that tells you your ocean acidification and, and, and all that. So we've, we've, we've been, uh, been here and we've sailed on the ship since 2012 when it came. I was the chief scientist on the first special cruise to Gough Island, which is one of the islands that uh, hosts um, um, uh, some of the South African scientists. They stay there for a year. So we went there and we had a few people. Some of them were intense at the time, and I'm glad to say some of them are actually scientists and technicians which have been trained through this ship and through this flagship program. And now, the last four days you've had members of the public coming on board. I was amazed to see how many people are here. It's a frosty day in Cape Town, especially by the seaside. Sure. What's the response been? Well, our aim was to bring everyone on board to try and show them what we actually do. And uh, it's, it's a, there's been a big public outcry that oceans, although they cover 70% of our planet, we actually have neglected them in terms of publicizing them. South Africa is, is, has got three oceans around it, and some people do not actually know that. And this is one of the things that we touch base with the public, especially learners and public members of the public, to tell them the kind of work that you do and how it contributes to their daily life. And it's been a very good turnout, and I'm glad to say that one of the schools, actually is Protea Heights uh, Academy, they have enrolled marine sciences into the school curriculum. And one of the teachers that we interacted with said last year was the first time they actually graduated matric matriculant. So it is taking a very good uh, direction, and I'm actually glad as a marine scientist that we're getting a good pool of people coming through. Now, you grew up inland. Uh, what's it like <laughs> being at sea so much with your work, and when was the last time you got seasick? Oh, well, um, I come from Daum, a small town in the northwest. And if you know Daum Skal, uh, that's where I come from. And a transition from going inland to go to, to the ocean was, was actually amazing. And I've managed to get used to it. And let me tell you the truth. Uh, you can go to sea for 30 days. You'll still get seasick at one point or the other. And you just get on with it, and then it's, it's actually good. We have, we have been able to, to do more cruises, despite us getting seasick. We're still good. Now, we understand that uh, after today's public tours, there's going to be a special consignment of people on board, and you're heading up the east coast of South Africa. Tell us more about that quickly. Well, we're going to the well, east, south, south, east coast, and we're going on a, on a trip. We're training even more people that we want to be scientists. We get uh, people that go on, on, on a cruise we call Sea Master, S-E-A Master. We get lots of students from, from all over the country, 
and some from Africa. We want to train as many marine scientists as possible. So we take people that have never been to sea, people that have never seen the ocean, we expose them to this kind of environment so that they are ready and they can choose this as a career in their life. So we can get as many scientists as possible. We've got a big ocean to do. Big ocean and lots of work to do. Clement, I'm going to give you a better sense of this wheel room. Thank you for your time. Uh, this is really the nerve center of the very vessel that we're on, the SA Gallus 2. And uh, Captain, my captain, Sibusiso uh, Mdluli, I really wanted to do this before we get into the interview. Uh, you've been on board since 2013. It's going to be your 10-year anniversary this year. What happens in this very center of uh, the wheel room? I like the fact that you call it the nerve center. It is the nerve center because you do get, at times, you do, you do get those nerve wracking times, especially when you're going down the ice. You know, those are remote areas, and the one challenge down there is, is the weather. And, but with the team that I have on board, my first officer right here, and the rest of the team on board, competent team, we do it safely. And in the 10 years that you've been charting this research vessel, what have been some of the hairy moments when you've reckoned with that weather and had to steer this vessel safely? I would say, yeah, was, this vessel trades mostly down in the, down south in the Roaring Forties. They don't call them Roaring Forties for nothing. So the most scary moment is when you go going through the rolling 40s, especially in winter time, that the weather can be very challenging. And in the last couple of days, you've been welcoming members of the public here. You've engaged with school learners, some of whom are studying marine science, sciences. What have you been telling them about your work? I've been, I've been especially the, the kids, uh, the, the kids from high school, I've been telling them that especially I gave them the example that when I was at high school, I knew very little about about this about this environment, about the work environment, about this going out to sea. I thought going to sea was going to the navy. That's all that I knew. Getting to know this environment now, it's I feel that it's important for us that we, that are in the industry that we spread the word out there to the kids out there to say there is more than just just the Navy, there is the research to it, there is the other side of the sea, of, of, of sea going career, and there's a lot of it. So can you just give us a little bit of a sense of all the gizmos and gadgets here? You know them well, you've been working with them for 10 years, what on earth are we looking at? It's like a spaceship. So right, right behind you there is an ice, ice radar, that radar, we use that radar once you go through to the ice. That picks up that picks up the ice and that, that gives us the warning of the ice ahead of us, the, including the icebergs. Mm. We don't want to be like the Titanic. Eh? <laughs> that's, that's your ice radar for the ice. So we only use that once we enter down south, like down south of 60 degrees south. Okay. And that's your normal that's your normal VHF radio, your sun part phone, that's your radar. And this is your conning station. The conning station, it shows, it gives us an indication of your, of your engine settings, your weather, your wind, your wind, your wind speed in true motion and relative motion. And on the other side, that's your VHF, and that's another second radar next to the first mate there. That's your electronic charts as opposed that's basically behind you if you look at behind you there that's a paper chart oh yes, yes oh they're my the notes with all your names yes <laughs> that's the paper chart so that paper chart so that paper chart that's what's on that electron that's an electronic version of that there. and this is one of the islands that we trade on that's marion island Yes, I believe there's a rice, uh, mice problem on Marion Island at the moment. <laughs> Some of the research has been about dealing with the mice on Marion Island. So you work on paper and on screen as well? Yes, that's correct. We do both of them. This is our primary, but that's our, that's our secondary. 
Captain, I'm going to salute you again and thank you very much for giving us a little bit of an insight there, uh, Clemens, into what happens here in the wheel room uh, of the SA Gallus 2. It's called the wheel room. There is actually a wheel, like the wheel of old, those old vessels, uh, you know, with the steering wheel, as it were, of the ship. There are lots of members of the public on board as we speak right now, and we're hoping to get a better sense of what they're seeing and learning on this vessel as we celebrate World Oceans Day. It was on Thursday, but these tours have been going on on since then to the end of this weekend. Yeah, really fascinating there. Aaron Bates, thank you for that update.